In order to avoid copyright issues and to simplify the assignment, I shot footage of myself making various facial expressions in front of a mirror back in my apartment. I started by sketching out a basic outline of three seconds of motion. In the interest of creating a slightly more cartoony effect, I simplified the shape of the ears and the chin. I also removed my glasses to make my eyes more visible. You can see the result below. It's very jagged and noisy, even to the point where it obscures the motion. In particular, the outline jumps around to a serious degree. You can see this especially in the way that the hair changes shape from frame to frame. This got me curious about whether or not there was a good method for reducing this type of jitter. If I wanted to make smooth, subtle motion, and I wanted to do it quickly and reliably, what would be the best method? One of the clearest problems I could see was the way that the various shapes fluctuated as they moved. If I reused and repositioned shapes without redrawing them, could I remove the jitter? I reanimated the two seconds of the footage using frame-by-frame -frame repositioning of shapes. Whenever there was movement that required a redraw, I supplied one. I also relied heavily on onion skidding to try and make the motion as fluid as possible. You can see the two second result below. I've shortened the initial animation to match up with it better. I'm tempted to say that this failed on result of poor animation of the right eye. That's an inherent flaw in the technique though. As I reuse shapes and reposition them by mouse, they are prone to error. Shapes that don't look bad in one configuration get exponentially uglier the more that they're rearranged. Even if I could consistently overcome that, it's still a boring animation. It feels static, and the movement itself has jitter. The only difference is that there's no organic flexibility to hide it. It's not even faster to animate, really. Calculating which frames require redraws and trying to get shapes to match up when they're subtly changing is pretty agonizing. At this point, I decided to try my hand at some faster motion, and I started playing around with a Creative Commons attribution labeled parkour video I had downloaded from YouTube. This is why people do rotoscoping, I guess. What's really interesting is that most of the jitter becomes a non-issue if the subject is moving fast enough. The tracing technique works really, really well, perhaps even too well. I abandoned onion skinning entirely, and it wasn't until I replayed the first three seconds that I even noticed how the camera was moving. I could just safely ignore the motion. I was curious again, though. How far could I push this before it became too messy? I reanimated the first three seconds as quickly as possible and exaggerated the motion, stretching out the contact points whenever the person landed and adding ghosting effects and just generally being sloppy. I actually almost preferred the results to my original effects. It appears that the amount of sloppiness I can get away with is directly correlational to how fast I'm moving at any given point in time. But exactly how much could I get away with? I went back to the original three second clip and reanimated, attempting as closely as possible to mirror the amount of time and effort I put into the motion of the previous clip. My original sketch had gone for a cartoony look. I abandoned this and just redrew the lines as closely as possible. I also added the glasses back in because Hey, detail. The results are shown below, and they actually are an improvement over the original in my opinion. Part of this has to do with the consistency I'm putting into my hair, chin, and ears, where before they literally change shape, and they now only fluctuate around a constant shape. It was time to try a more detailed approach. I was getting tired of animating myself, so I jumped back into the parkour video and, as closely as possible, traced over a man talking. The results were, predictably, much, much better than any of my previous attempts had been. I even animated about a second of a camera pan to see how this method would fit in with a faster, sloppier motion, and it did work somewhat well. It didn't remove the jitter, though. I still had shapes changing and jumping back and forth. The only reason it wasn't as noticeable was because the drawing was more detailed. I was looking for a method that would create the same smoothness that was visible in the faster motion. And although this looked pretty good, it wasn't that method. As a final approach, I stepped back and reevaluated some of the notions that I was using when I came into rotoscoping. I didn't want to use static shapes because they couldn't translate any subtle movement, and they didn't match up well with camera motion anyway. I also didn't want to just pour more time into making all the lines match up, because it felt like just applying a band-aid rather than fixing the underlying problem. I picked another two-second clip and traced over just the extremes of the motion. These were the points I wanted to end up. I gave them a cartoony style so I couldn't cheat and use the previous method. At this point, I hid my video and relied entirely on onion skinning. 
I added a couple of in-betweens to figure out how I wanted to move from each shape to shape. Then I went back through and compressed the keyframes to make the motion more snappy. I went back through and repeatedly drew in-betweens until I had a standard frame-by-frame -frame animation. The result is below. Because I could see both where my animation began and where I wanted it to end up, I was able to make the shapes flow into each other and, like the running clip, move in a specific direction rather than just jump back and forth. What's interesting to note is that the individual frames in this animation are actually pretty sloppy, almost as much as in the running clip. If I spent more time on them, I could get an even better result. For example, here's a cleaned up version where the chin doesn't bulge as much. I still don't think this is an ideal methodology for all cases. I had to ignore and edit parts of the motion to make it, and in some ways that sort of violates the point of rotoscoping to begin with. If I had more experience, I could probably make a general conclusion at this point about where each technique is best suited, but I don't have that kind of experience, hence this video.